Andre Vermeulen, a researcher and a consultant in neuroscience, and we'll talk about the neuroagility. I'm Wagner Casimiro, and this is the Espresso Tree. First of all, what's the, the concept of uh, neuroagility, and why is it so important to design and develop a learning culture? Yeah, uh, you know, neuroagility is about the brain-based factors that influences the ease, the speed, and the flexibility with which people learn, think, and process information. And as we are entering the fourth industrial revolution, we are constantly facing disruptive change. And that agility that people will need to very quickly adapt and adjust to new systems, new structures, new technology, create new spaces, learning spaces, job spaces, and move into those spaces where it's going to be unknown territory for people, but they need to have that mental flexibility to be able to execute the learning and thinking functions needed in that moment to be able to do what they do. That's what narrow agility is all about. Now, if you look at a learning organization, it, it's actually the sum total of the brain power of that organization. So obviously, when we want to create a learning culture in an organization, it has to start by optimizing people's performance and empowering them with the agility to think, learn, and create easy, fast, and be flexible enough to do what is required of me in that moment to solve the problem, or to create new things, or whatever the, the, the work, the job requires of me. Yeah. In your opinion, what are the main blockers of the brain activity? Yeah, absolutely. There's, there, there are many. Uh, I refer to them as drivers. So there are things that can either optimize your performance or lack of those uh, skills will be a blocker to your uh, performance. So the first one is brain agility. And that is where we have the flexibility to utilize all different brain regions at one. But then things like stress causes us to lose control over certain brain regions. So we can never be at our best when we function under stress. Uh, another blocker is if we do not sleep well enough because we need good sleep in order to be able to produce those chemicals vital for mental alertness but also to heal and to re-energize. So a long enough, but also a good quality sleep has a very direct impact on your fatigue levels. So that's why if you want to cope with stress and manage fatigue well, sleep is a very important part of it. Then we have a saying that says movement is the door to learning, because if we move sufficiently, it switches on the brain, it helps us produce those vital neurotransmitters that's important for processing information fast and easy. Um, but also, uh, when we move, uh, cross-lateral movements improve our brain agility, but it also energizes the brain as more oxygenated blood goes to the brain. Then, obviously, the food we eat uh, are the raw materials from which we produce those neurotransmitters. So a brain-friendly diet is essential. But then uh, how we think, our mindset, or sometimes we refer to it as attitude, but it's the way that we habitually think. If we think in a limited way, we think of ourselves and others and our world in a very limited way. So we put ourselves in boxes. And the alternative to that would be a growth mindset, where we are open-minded, where we look at possibilities, where we learn from challenges and negative experiences. They become our teachers so we can progress and they find solutions to those problems. So uh, open-mindedness, a positive mindset, but the world now speaks about a growth mindset is a vital uh, um, aspect of um, our optimizing our brain performance or a limiting mindset that is a blocker to brain performance. Okay, thank you. So in the next video, we will explore ways to implement this concept inside the context.